Hey there guys, I recently took my truck in for an oil change. The service guy there recommended I should change the, uh, the plugs on the vehicle. It should have been done at 100,000 miles. And when I did dip my timing belt on the truck, I did not change it. I'm about 123,000 miles on the vehicle. And I had asked the guy what it would cost to get them changed there at the dealer. And he quoted uh, $87 for the plugs and $100 on the service plus tax. So I told him to hold that thought. Um, the truck uses uh, Iranian plugs, which is basically a long-lasting plug. Um, they're pretty expensive, but if you think about what you're getting out of them, um, it, it kind of makes up and pays off in the long run. My suggestion is to try to always get the plugs that are recommended for the vehicle. Um, if you're doing aftermarket, uh, do a little research on it. I read on the forum some guy used some Bosch plugs and it turned out that three months later he started having engine issues and when he took the plugs out the plugs were burnt. Um, so best to always do a little research before you go right into changing these. I personally think you can save yourself the money and doing it yourself. The only cost is going to be your plugs. So anyway, I'm shooting this little video so you guys can get uh, an idea what it's like. Stay tuned. Okay, so <clears throat> these are my plugs. They are uh, Toyota recommended. You don't have to get those. You can get something else. But just remember, make sure you research on your aftermarket plugs that they are going to be the ones that are going to work. I have a um, <clears throat> 5 8 magnetic spark plug removal. You are going to need it. Some kind of a long extension because you're going into a deep well to remove the plugs. And then you have a 10 millimeter socket which you're going to need to remove the little bolt on the side of the coil because each plug has their own individual coils. And then I threw some extra sockets here, obviously, in case if I need something else I need to remove out of the way. Uh, this is basically all you need. Oh, and you're also going to need a compressor. You're going to probably say, why? Well, if you're going into the wheel well, I mean, sorry, the well of these plugs, which are located right here, you want to make sure you blow out any dust particles or any debris out of that well before you put in the new plug so it doesn't end up going into your cylinder. Uh, some guys will do it and others won't. I'm going to do it just to play it safe. <clears throat> okay so the first thing I'm going to do is remove the wire off of the coil. Sometimes you may need a, you know, a little screwdriver to pry it off. I've not touched these in a while. So there you go. And I'm going to do one plug at a time. I don't need to take them all out and then start dropping plugs in. So, uh, there we go. I have to break off the knots around pretty tight. Another thing too is you want to make sure you don't drop your screws out on the floor. So I'm going to put my hand here. There we go. Here's your boot. That's what it looks like with the coil. Alright. And um, I can see the plug from here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the camera down so you can take a look at down at the, lo the wheel, I mean the, uh, the well. And if you can see that in there. It's a little sunny here, but anyway, that's what I need to get to down there. I just looked at my compressor and the damn bolt on the regulator stripped out so <laughs> I gotta change that out but I'm using a vice grip to tighten it up this is just so I can blow the dust out of the uh, spark spark plug well little details alright so I'm gonna blow out whatever is in there 
It should be clean, but I'm not going to run the risk on it. So that's all you need to do. And I'm ready to take that plug out. Okay, guys. You're going to turn these plugs counterclockwise. Okay. I already cracked it before I actually put the camera to start. You want to make sure you're going the right way on this. So it's going to be counterclockwise on the plug. Uh, otherwise, you end up stripping the, uh, the threads and then you run into bigger problems. It's a little tight yet. Um, and it's always best to have a good um, spark plug removal. This one here is magnetic. Oh, I didn't get it all the way in. Took a little longer, I didn't realize there's a long thread on it, but it's what the plug looks like. And like I said, this whole socket is magnetic. I mean, look, it just grabs everywhere, but it works well. Now, most people will ask, all right, so what is the gaps for the spark plugs? These are already pre-gapped from the fa you know, fa factory-wise, so I'm not gonna mess with the gaps on it even though you should really check in case but I'll tell you that the majority of the times I've changed plugs that are pre-gapped and they protect it with this little cardboard sleeve uh, usually it's pretty much on target so this is what a new plug will look like in comparison to an old plug that has been used this one already has a hundred thousand miles so I'm just basically gonna go ahead and drop a new one in there and then I'm going to change them all out. I'm not going to bore you guys with the details of how to change every each and individual plugs because basically what I show you on the first step of it is going to be throughout the whole thing. Unless I find something that has to be removed, then I will go ahead and video tape that again. Okay, so just like I said, it's magnetic. I will show you the first plug that I'm going to put in. And I'm just going to go in gently until I find myself in the... Uh, the opening and I'm going to thread gently just to make sure that plug catches you don't want to cross thread your your plug so it's a long thread so I'm gonna do it all by hand until it singes down so right now I can't get any more what I'll do is I'll get my wrench and I just give it a nice little snug and I'm done with this plug okay I'm done with this one side this last plug I had a little problem getting that little uh, wires off the coil uh, it's important guys that you do not pull from the wires you need to uh, nudge the whole that whole plug using the plug itself if you pull on the wire you run the risk of yanking a wire out of the slot and then you're you open a can of worms. So we're done with all the four plugs here. I'm going to go on the other side. Okay, we're on the opposite side. And this is your number one plug. It is right next to the relay fuse box. You're going to have to use some kind of a swivel on your socket in order to get here. Otherwise, you got to remove this whole thing out. Um, I didn't want to do that. So just be very careful when you break the uh, seal on the uh, plug. Uh, it's kind of tricky if you're not done a, a flexible elbow on this, but it can be done. All right, this last plug was a little more of a challenge. And just to let you know, you got these lines here that gets in the way with your wrench. You cannot move that. I don't care what anybody says. 
and you can't afford to break them neither. So what I had to do was, um, first of all, the, the, the plugs in this motor are super tight, so you really need a good kind of a breaker wrench, which I've been using. So I was able to sneak in my uh, spark plug removal just by itself without any kind of coupler or anything like that. And then this wrench I'm using here, uh, it um, you can elongate it to shorten a, and make it longer, you see? Which is nice, it gives you that leverage that you need. I mean, this thing gets really big if you want. So what I did is I, hey, give me a second here, let me just retract this back. I uh, put put the uh, handle long enough so that I can break the seal on the plug. And uh, here's what it looks like when it's retracted back in its place. And I was able to take that plug out. Now, for me to get to tighten that plug, I already thread it. Is that I'm going to have to use a shorter wrench. I don't need the breaker bar anymore, or breaker wrench, whatever you want to call this. Um, just tighten it down and then I have this plug left to do. I chose to do the last one because I kept looking at it as I was doing the first two front ones in the front and I said man that's going to be a little challenge but you know with persistent I was able to get it out and stuff. It's doable guys this is not like you know painting Picassos or anything like that you just got to take your time make sure you you know do it right and you can save yourself a lot of money. Truly save yourself a lot of money. Oh, one more thing I didn't uh, mention. When you take the boots out, do please expect them at the end. Make sure they're not cracked or dry rotted from the heat. Uh, I've been using the compressors to blow the end, end part of the coupler. Yeah, I'm going to come over here and show you what I'm talking about. This is what it looks like, what you're basically going to be taking out. This end part here, for some reason, it gets filled with sand and dust particles, so I've been using the blower, to, the uh, compressor to uh, blow it out. And then I just kind of look at the end of the, of the uh, boot to make sure it's all intact and it's good. I don't know what these things cost, but just by the weight of it and stuff, it tells me they're pretty expensive. Um, but that's it. That was the only challenge I found myself with the truck trying to get the plug out. And uh, besides dealing with the Florida heat here, but we've been able to do it. Hey guys, I'm about to start my car, truck up. Plugs are all changed. I should be good for another 100,000 miles on it. And like I said, guys, you can save yourself a lot of money if you do it yourself. Just take your time. It's not all that difficult to do. Thank you for watching and stay tuned.